Hi, meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Monday morning, November 22nd. Quite an interesting weather pattern going forward over the next couple of weeks. We definitely have multiple cold air outbreaks to continue to move into the central and eastern part of the nation. One such cold air mass arrives today in the mid-Atlantic region, the northeast U.S., following the passage of an early morning cold frontal system, uh, definitely below normal temperatures tonight, tomorrow, going into the day on Wednesday. It looks like we'll, we'll get a little bit milder, back up into the 50s on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, but that's just ahead of the next cold front that ushers in another cold air mass for the Friday and Saturday time period in the northeastern quadrant of the nation and there is a threat of interest to me about a week from now early next week for the mid-atlantic region we'll talk about that over the next few minutes of talking about uh, roughly around monday november 29th here's a look at the temperatures across the nation the temperature anomalies across the nation for the first 20 days of november generally at or below normal in the eastern half of the nation and that kind of a trend should continue over the next eight days or so, right through the end of the month of November. Here we are on November 22nd. I'm talking about going through uh, to November 30th. Right around normal in the big cities along the I-95 corridor region of D.C., Philadelphia, New York City through the 20th of November. But again, uh, multiple cold air masses probably will help to trend these temperatures to below normal uh, for the, the month as a whole. Out in the west, first 20 days above normal for the most part, and that kind of a pattern should continue as well over the next week or so. Well, before we get into last night's operational run of the GFS, I want to talk about a couple of uh, teleconnection type indices. First of all, the North Atlantic Oscillation, and then we'll look at the Madden-Julian Oscillation the, Madden, the MJO, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, uh, uh, involves a tropical disturbance that kind of propagates around the world, and its uh, particular phase uh, can, have, uh, can give some signals as to temperature and precipitation patterns across the U.S. We'll talk about that next after we talk about the NAO. First of all, the black represents observed conditions right around the neutral uh, line right now as we begin uh, this particular week, November 22nd, it trends downward over the next several days. And again, a sustained period of negative NAO and negative AO, the Arctic Oscillation, generally indicates the cold air outbreaks can make it from Canada all the way into the central and eastern U.S. Indeed, one cold air uh, outbreak arrives today and kind of reinforce overnight tonight into the day on Tuesday and then another one arrives by Friday and it uh, uh, will be kind of sandwiched in, bet uh, in between those two outbreaks will be a milder day on Thanksgiving probably in the low to mid 50s for afternoon highs on Thursday afternoon but the elsewhere we're talking about the 40s early this week and again late this week. Notice after the next few days there's kind of a, a, a indication that there could be a big upturn in the NAO and oftentimes when the NAO and the AO combined uh, shift dr uh, dramatically in a short period of time then sometimes that uh, is kind of an active weather period along the eastern seaboard so that's uh, uh, one of the reasons why I'm pretty interested in what may happen about a week from now where we're talking November 29th time frame and we'll talk about that more over the next couple of minutes. Now let's take a look at the Madden-Julian Oscillation. Again, this is a tropical disturbance that rotates in the tropical region around the globe kind of on a periodic basis and its particular position uh, uh, in the tropical region tends to have certain impacts on uh, the U.S. in terms of temperature and precipitation depending on the time of the year as well. And the green here represents the forecast by the ensemble run of the GFS, and you can see it goes from what we call phase, phase six in this particular case, all the way into phase seven. It looks like it'll propagate into phase seven by the time we get uh, into the first week of December. This particular forecast ends on December 6th, right in this region. So it looks like this particular uh, computer forecast model 
moves the MJO maybe into phase seven by the time we get into the first week of December. We'll see in a moment here that generally is associated with colder than normal weather in much of the central and eastern U.S. Uh, it's, this is not the only model that <clears throat> depicts a movement into phase seven. We'll take a look here, right here. This is the, the uh, European model. If I can get that up there, you can see that too rotates into phase seven right in this region here around December 6 or so. So a couple different computer forecast models do move the MJO into what we, what we call colder phases for this particular time of the year as we head into the month of December. And here are those composite maps of uh, the MJO, depending on what phase the MJO is in this particular time of the year. And take a look here, phase seven and uh, following that phase eight, colder than normal for much of the eastern and central U.S. with these particular phases of the MJO. So again, that's just one thing we're watching here as we roll into the month of December. Signaling could have a continuation of some colder air outbreaks for the eastern half of the nation as we move into and through the first half of the month of December. Well, let's now take a look at the operational run of the GFS, uh, GFS model from 0Z last night. Now, the 6E model run is available, and I've talked about this before. I definitely prefer the 0Z run and the 12Z run because those two particular time periods have the very latest, the freshest radius on data, the upper air data. When you get to the 6Z runs and the 18Z runs, they are important, but they have kind of stale upper air data. The radius on data is six hours old. So uh, I generally like to focus in on the 0Z runs and the 12Z runs. If something dramatic changes at 6Z, then you have to look for confirmation of that at the next run, the 12Z run, for example. So again, one of the reasons why I tend to focus in on the 0Z run, even though, again, the 6Z run is available at this particular time of the morning. Let's look at the 850 millibar temperature anomalies. And here we go with a, a blob of colder than normal air moving across the Great Lakes this morning into the Mid-Atlantic region. Again, a cold frontal system is just now sweeping off the eastern seaboard, and it will stay windy and cold in much of the northeastern quadrant of the nation uh, through the day today, into the night tonight, and all day on Tuesday. Windy and cold, well below normal for this time of the year. Things do ease up at midweek. Here we are now, Wednesday morning, the cold of the normal air mass kind of grudgingly working its way off the coast, still remaining colder than normal likely on Wednesday in the Mid-Atlantic region, the Northeast U.S., but the winds will be much of a, less of a factor as they will be later today, tonight, and Tuesday. So Wednesday, let's say, will be cold but less harsh. And then Thursday, kind of a brief break to above normal conditions, perhaps back up into the middle 50s for highs in places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, following the cold the first half of the week. <clears throat> that warm-up on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, will be short-lived, however. Look at a, this upstream. By the time we get to Friday morning, yet another cold air outbreak reaches the eastern part of the nation. And again, another windy and cold day. Maybe some rain showers early in the day with that next frontal system. Then things get a little bit interesting here, uh, in my opinion. It stays colder than normal into the upcoming weekend through the day, Black Friday, and then into the uh, Saturday and Sunday. We kind of have a rotating uh, a cold air mask that comes back in by the uh, early part of next week. This is the Monday, a week from now. We're talking about November 29th. And again, this is kind of an interesting time period we'll have to monitor closely over the next several days. Much like the first 20 days of November, it stays warmer than normal out in the western half of the nation. And generally, a colder than normal in the eastern half. Again, the one exception day might be Turkey Day itself, itself on Thursday. Well, let's now take a look at the 500 millibar height anomalies, again using the 0Z run of the GFS. Uh, this is a, a, a deep upper level low over the Great Lakes region this morning associated with that cold air outbreak that's reaching the Mid-Atlantic region right now as we speak. Now let's move forward here. And notice the uh, upper level low kind of stretched out along the eastern seaboard as we begin the day on Tuesday. And winds will be very gusty 
later on today out of the northwest tonight and all day on Tuesday. And then we see this upper level ridge here that uh, cuts across the nation and reaches the eastern states at uh, midweek and into the day on Thursday. This is a Thursday morning forecast map. Probably some sunshine, probably in the 50s in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, but upstream already another upper level low. And that is associated with that next cold air outbreak, but uh, reaches the eastern third of the nation on Friday. And then uh, we'll move into the weekend. It stays certainly colder than normal on Saturday, and we saw, saw that kind of uh, rotating a, a, a reinforcing cold shot for the early part of next week. And this is the system of interest. We have to monitor over the next several days. Notice a, a little difference with these next couple of waves in the upper atmosphere. This one drives a little bit farther to the south and east. Here we are a week from now, next Monday afternoon, November 29th. This is something we'll have to monitor. Again, if it can manage to dive a little bit more to the south, before it makes the turn along the eastern seaboard, things could get interesting, interesting uh, about a week from now in terms of a potential storm along the uh, mid-Atlantic coastline, something we'll have to watch over the next several days. Well, let's now wrap up with the uh, surface forecast maps from the Zero-Z GFS. Again, that cold front sliding off the eastern seaboard right now. Notice uh, we have quite a pressure gradient between departing low pressure over New England and an incoming high here by tomorrow morning. Pretty good uh, pressure gradient here, and again, strong northwest winds later on today, tonight, and tomorrow, much below normal temperatures. Maybe some isolated snow showers south and east of the uh, Appalachian Mountains over the next 24 to 36 hours or so. Then things get a little bit calm calmer by the time we get into midweek. Still cold, but less in less harsh conditions on Wednesday. Very good day for traveling, by the way, and, uh, throughout the eastern half of the nation, across much of the nation, as a matter of fact, on Wednesday. Then we get a little bit of a warm-up on Thursday, right here Thursday afternoon, some sunshine, probably in the 50s for highs in the mid-Atlantic region. Then in the next cold front arrives late uh, Thursday night going into Friday morning and here's another cold air outbreak for Friday uh, and into the day on Saturday and again kind of a reinforcing shot of cold air by the time we get to Monday and here we go this is a little bit of a system here over the Great Lakes by Sunday night associated with that next upper level low and it does Try to form a storm off the uh, mid-Atlantic coastline by the time we get to Monday. And again, we're talking speculation phase here a week from now, November 29th. This is something we'll have to monitor over the next several days. It does have some potential. If that upper-level system can dig a little bit farther to the south and east, we may be dealing with something of interest here about a week from now, November 29th. That's it for now. I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.